Being a hater does not simply mean that you hate something. It is about making hating something the entire core of your existence. You don't just dislike it, it offends you to your very soul. And by God, does every single hater always pop off. A truly elite character dynamic that Fire Emblem has historically done really well. There is no meme. This is just a threat. Hey! Welcome back to the show where I just ramble on about how Fire Emblem takes the exact same idea and manages to do it uniquely within two characters. This time, I'm gonna look at two of the resident I Hate the Lord characters, looking specifically at Inez and Shannon. I picked these two because they're from back-to-back -back games, they both have incredible beef with the main character for seemingly no reason, and they're both archers, so I felt like it was apt to compare the two of them, and we're gonna start with Inez. Inez has a huge beef with one of Sacred Stones' main lords, Ephraim. And how bad is it? In Inez's literal first scene that he shows up in, he says hello to his sister, and then immediately shit-talks Ephraim for losing his kingdom to the enemy Empire Grotto, only apologizing when he realizes that Ephraim's dad is dead. And by the way, he doesn't even apologize for being a dick, he just apologizes that his dad is dead. That is his first scene, and what makes it so great is that Ephraim is comforted by this. Inez is such a hater that Ephraim seeing that gives him a sense of normalcy. Ephraim's kingdom is gone, his father is dead, he's been running on the lamb for so long, but at the end of the day, Inez still absolutely hates his guts, and that's some sign that things will be okay to him. Imagine being that much of a tool. I love Inez, but he's a tool. And the other thing about Inez's feud with Ephraim that makes it really funny is that it is so one-sided. Inez will constantly, and I mean constantly, go out of his way to mention Ephraim, to talk about Ephraim, and Ephraim could not give less of a shit. There is no point in the game where Ephraim ever acknowledges Inez. There's no support between the two of them. Ephraim's just like, yeah, that's Inez. He'll bring him up when he's relevant to the conversation, sure, but he won't go out of his way to just talk about Inez. Meanwhile, Ephraim occupies this giant space in Inez's head, and he will not leave. The literal definition of rent-free. So, okay, it's a silly feud, a one-sided feud, but why, right? Why does Inez hate Ephraim so much? Because Inez has to have the biggest cock in every room he's standing in, and Ephraim is hung like a mule. To get more into it, Inez believes that because he's prince, he's the prince of an entire country, he needs to be the best at everything because that's what's required for a king. A king has to be smarter than everyone, stronger than everyone, more charismatic than everyone, because if he isn't, what right does he have to lead? So Inez has put a lot of stock in appearance, in intelligence, in strength, in speed, charisma, etc, etc, because that's what he feels is necessary, and it has a tragic side effect. He is incredibly arrogant. Inez truly believes in himself more than anyone else around him, which is really funny because everyone around him believes in him, and he somehow believes in himself more. So because of this, when Ephraim comes in, who puts up this air of regality, of charisma, of being this great leader, Inez feels threatened. He feels like he is inferior, and that reflects poorly on his ego, but also on his belief that he's going to be the greatest king. Because how can he be the greatest king when blue hair and pronouns is right over there looking better than him? So it actually is an interesting reason for Inez's anger and hatred towards Ephraim, but the game also isn't afraid to take the piss out of Inez. Erica and Tana will make him the butt of jokes because, yes, he's kind of a douche. 
I don't remember where I heard this. I think it was a Twitter post. It might have been a YouTube comment. But someone compared Inez and Ephraim's beef to Timmy Turner's dad and Dinkelberg. And that is just such an apt comparison that really just tells you everything you need to know about it. But in addition to being genuinely funny, it does kind of show Inez's thought processes and does still make him really likable for it. It's a beef that actually just encapsules all of Inez's character. And I think it's really impressive that it can do that, especially when one half of this beef doesn't say a goddamn word about it. Inez is just a petty little man, and I love him for that. And the last thing I want to mention before I move on to Shannon is how Fire Emblem Heroes, the roulette wheel of whether or not a character is properly adapted, absolutely nailed Inez's dynamic with Ephraim. Because Inez has three appearances in Heroes, and all three of them will have lines that are just going out of their way to shit-talk Ephraim. Like, the swimming alt has Inez thinking, you think Ephraim would fight a shark barehanded? Why would you think that? That is not a normal human being thought to have, Inez. And you know what? Ephraim has, like, what is it, 27 alts at this point? Across all of them, Inez is mentioned once. Because he had to stop Ephraim from trying to swim with a full suit of armor. Because I don't even need to explain why. That just so perfectly understands what makes the two of them work, and Fire Emblem Heroes, thank you for that. I would hope that they can write Ephraim well, considering he and Erica are the only two characters from Sacred Stones that exist to them, and sometimes Leon. Before we move on to Shannon, I have to go over the most important part of the video. I'd like to thank my patrons, including the likes of Adebayo Thompson, Andrew Crockett, Bean Juice, Ben's Again, Dr. McBackstab, Great Reek, Hell on Heelys, Jispacito 2, Lysevony Bolt, Mark the Valiant War Criminal, Morgalorgan, Plaid Arrow, Shen Lu, The Fool, The World's Most Unironic 8.5 Tail Stan, Walmart Greeter, Your Girl Olwyn, Brentendo 11, Drew Hack, Fireman Lord, Ginger, Goo Goo Gaga, Cornelia Milkers 92, Maple Knight, and Upscale Furry Trash. Thank you all for your continued support. Link to the Patreon in the description if you want to fill my pockets. So you had Inez, a hater who just really hates this one dude. And in the next game, they went to Shannon, who, yes, Shannon really hates the game's main lord, Ike. But Shannon manages to be different from Inez and Arlen and other haters by just hating almost everything. Shannon does not stop bitching. He hates Ike, he'll bitch at Soren, he'll bitch at the weather, he'll bitch at races. He just is a certified hater of everything. And this does lead to some good comedy from him. There's a scene early on where he's like, Ugh, Ike's a little baby boy, he shouldn't be in charge of anything. So Grail tells him, Alright, sure, go be with Ike then to make sure he's okay since you're so worried about it. Or there's another scene where Ike puts it the best. He says... Shannon wouldn't tell me he smelled smoke if I was on fire. Like, Ike, unlike Ephraim, is well aware that he has this hater. But Ike just doesn't give a shit, which presents its own brand of comedy, because again, it's one-sided, but in a different sense. Like, Shannon literally gets shit-faced drunk in one of the base conversations in Path of Radiance, and it's all like, ooh, here comes Big Dick Ike coming in, he's got the princess, he's got the army, ah, look at him! And Ike is just like, what the fuck is this guy? Like, he never cares at all, which makes it even funnier that Shannon is like this. Shannon is such a douche that it even blends into his gameplay, because he has the skill Provoke which makes enemies want to attack him. Now, in a gameplay sense, that skill should not be on an archer like Shannon, because he can't defend himself. But when you think about it from a world standpoint, everyone around him fucking hates this guy, who you know is insulting them, probably saying racial slurs at all of his enemies, and they're all thinking, I gotta kill that guy. 
Like, I need to beat that man to death with hammers. So Shannon is such an arrogant a-hole that it bleeds into his gameplay, and I think that that is just mwah, chef's kiss. So, much like in Ez, the hater dumb gets a nice amount of laughs, it's silly, but the question is, why? Why does Shannon hate Ike so much? Is it like Inez, where it's some pride thing? No. His reason is much more petty and stupid. He believes that Ike is born in the lap of luxury. Because, you know, being the son of a poor mercenary is apparently rich living. Shannon values experience more than anything else. Something that Ike, in the beginning of Path of Radiance, doesn't have. Shannon respects Grail. He respects Titania the people who have been mercenaries long enough to reach their 30s and 40s. Typically, mercenaries are not people that die peacefully in bed. You get killed on the battlefield, and then you're thrown in some ditch somewhere. So if you survive long enough to get old, that means you know what you're doing. And Shannon consistently shows respect to that. For example... Shannon is most infamously known as being a racist. It's in Tellius, it's a story about racism, and Shannon absolutely hates the Lagoo, to the point where he even teaches Ike racial slurs. The only time in any of the games that Shannon actually shows some respect is when he learns that Janaf is 111 years old. So Shannon's like, wow. You must have lived a long time. And he starts to show a bit more respect because he respects that experience. So Ike, who's just this little dude, like only 17 years old or whatever he was in Path of Radiance, is suddenly thrust into a leadership position that Shannon is expected to bow to, not literally, and just respect him? No, Shannon's not about that. That's why he leaves. And, like, that might put him at the highest level. Because, for as much as Arlen hates Merrick, as much as Inez hates Ephraim, or Felix, and Dimitri, they're there in the context of their own stories. I know Felix can leave his house, but I mean, like, in Blue Lions, Felix is still there. Arlen is fighting with Merrick. Shannon, the second he learns that Ike is gonna be the boss now, he leaves. He's like, nope, I'm not doing this. I'm out. Which I think, first of all, it actually gives some weight to Ike taking over the mercenaries, because not everyone's all on board with it. When someone like Erica or Elawood has to suddenly lead a group of knights, well, the knights swore fealty to that country. They gotta listen to them. Shannon and Gatry are under no such vows. They can just leave, and they do and it helps make the impact of Grail's death in Path of Radiance even stronger. So Shannon being a hater does play into the story a good amount, and I also really like how it plays into his recruitment requirement. Because as you play the game, you'll probably think, oh, okay, very obviously I need to talk to Shannon with Rolf. That's like the first thing you would think after seeing Shannon. And that's not it. For those of you that have not played Path of Radiance, to recruit Shannon, you do need to talk to him with Rolf, but then you need to kill him with Ike. You have to force Shannon to come face to face with the fact that Ike is better than him. And that is the only way he will like be, okay, fine, I'll join you. Which I think, again, ties into his hatred of him really well. And also sits to emphasize the fact that Ike is not like other lords. The Knights of Rene would not do this to Erica and Ephron. The Knights of Arcanea would not do this to Marth. It's something that uniquely can only happen to Ike, and I think that helps with the world building and just the dynamic of the Grail mercenaries. So while Inez's hatred of Ephron was good for Inez's character and showing how he functions and how he thinks, Shannon's hatred for Ike actually bleeds into the story and themes of the game of Ike not being a noble, having to fight for what he gets. And it does also help with Shannon's character, because you can kind of get it. Like, his hatred of people with silver spoons in their mouths is not uncommon, and the fact that Gatry leaves with him 
also helps goes to show that it's not just Shannon alone being a hater. Even a nice dude like Gatry is still like, I'm not going to do this. I'm not trusting a 17-year-old with my life. So I think it really helps not just Shannon, but also Ike and the story of the game. And everything about their dynamic becomes way funnier when you realize that in Path of Radiance, Ike is 17 and Shannon is 27. This grown-ass man is having a beef with a child because he thinks he's a Nepo baby. And honest to God, that level of stupid pettiness is so funny to me. Like, I know Shannon isn't the most popular character because, you know, all the racism, which is fair. But if you just look at him as this dumb, pathetic man, I think he becomes really funny. So there you go. The tale of two haters and what their characters do for themselves and the world around them. If you have any ideas for this show, please let me know. I enjoy doing these sort of no script, laid back kind of videos. Thank you all for your continued support. And I will see you for the next one where I'll do, I don't know, Devden and Danved.